everybody, this is James from Easter Seals, and today we're going to be finishing up our series about the Kelly Sticks, or Skirmish Sticks. These are Filipino weapons. Uh, they are excellent, they are really fun to use. I've talked about them before in the last two videos, so if you haven't seen them already, go check them out. But today, I want to focus on how to thrust with these. Now, we talked about the last session of how to combo with these, if you want to go with this, or if you want to kind of go with this. But, what if you want to kind of thrust? Now, thrusting with two of these is actually going to be really difficult. Because one of the biggest problems, and I'll show it with just one, is that your wrist is not really made to thrust. Now, here's the problem. If I'm going like this, now I'm going against a straight wall. Look how weird my wrist is. If I put any pressure, my wrist is going to collapse. So when I throw like this and I put any pressure, um, my hand's just going to fall apart. Also, so I have a damage of hurting my wrist, and also, I don't have any grip. So if I put any body weight, my hand's just going to slip forward. So one-handed like this is actually not a great idea. Even if I go right here, if I have perfect form, it's not great. Now, if I'm like quick jab or something, okay. But if I really want to do any damage, it's not great. Um, if you want to see a good example of that with a sword, look at um, a rapier. A rapier is designed to fix that problem by actually having a little hook right here. So now, when I do that, by, by having my, my ring finger over the stick, I actually have much more support. Now, I still have the problem of sliding, but my wrist is actually straight. Watch what happens when I bring it down. See how it's limped? But if I bring it up like this, so, if you wanted the thrust, I suppose, designing it like this, let me just lean in a little bit, where I bring in my wrist over here, it's slightly better, but, and I can actually do this, I can actually put pressure, or so I put it back here, if I put pressure, my wrist is, I, I can already feel it on my hand. So, if you're about, but like that's the problem though, if you're, if you're throwing strikes, and then switching your finger, that's not a great idea. So, how can you thrust with it? It's actually using your other hand. That's why I like using one hand as opposed to two. Um, this is the traditional way to kind of fight with it, like this. Um, but you lose a lot of flexibility. And I mentioned before, you lose the ability to thrust. Now, one of the things you can do is all of a sudden, if you have another hand, I have a lot of control. I can put a lot of pressure right here. I feel fine. I don't want to ruin this wall. So when I come down, if I put my hand right here, two hands, I have a lot of control. I also have a lot of accuracy. If you were to do this and try to hit random any target, like I'm trying to hit this part right here, I miss it. And I'm really trying. Like I'm, I might hit it like one out of three times. That's not great. But if I have two hands, I'm hitting it every time. I have far more stability. So if I'm right here and I slash and I see an opening, I can come like that. Or if I see the stomach, I can come in right here. So coming with a thrust, I can do that. Now the other option is if let's say I'm coming down and I want to go downward, I can come in like this as well. You know, so I have options. But using the hand, this one to stabilize it. So I'm almost treating it almost like a spear at this point. I mean, I would probably do it like this. But it, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of treating it almost like a spear with two hands. And if I'm standing, I'm leaning into it and coming back. So I'm, let's say I had some combos. I'm like, one, two, and I really like that target. Boom. I come in like that. But I'm using this hand to stabilize it. I'm relaxing this one. But if I'm coming in this one, I come in like that. And people are probably not going to see it. They're expecting huge arcs, but then not really something that precise. You can't really do that with, with two. Once again, if I do this, my wrist is, you know, it's not gonna be accurate, and I'm probably gonna hurt myself more in the process because if I hit something solid, my wrist is probably gonna go. Where I can, I feel very comfortable thrusting like that. So, once again, kind of slish, swish, and then I kind of drop. So. What I like to do is I like to lazily drop it, and once it's right here, I can come in. So if I'm like, you know, coming, kind of faking out, and the last one I come in, that's it's tricky. 
once again, this one I'm saving for last because this is the hardest one. But if you got a stick, just kind of bring it down and put one hand fresh on top, and then just extend both at the same time. Keep your keep your uh, chest up, your shoulders in, and if you can stand, if you're standing, um, you know, just kind of come right in on that. If you're if you want to kind of go overhand, like let's say you want to go around them, you kind of come up like this. And instead of coming in downward like that, like it looks cool, don't get me wrong, but you're not gonna, you're, it's, this is really inaccurate and you're probably gonna hurt your wrist. But if I bring another one to stabilize it, I can do a lot of damage. So overall, these are fun. Like I mentioned in the first video, there is a lot of drawbacks, but there is something nice to just learn how to use these sticks I like doing these little floaty things too. You, you look fancy. You look like a ninja. But they're a really fun way to just kind of fool around with martial arts. Um, you, it's, it's fun just to kind of get the fluid fluidity, if you will, on that one. Learning how these work. And a lot of these techniques can be implemented. Whereas, for example, that stick right there, well, that's no different than a chop. Where when I'm doing this, it's literally the same thing. So if I wanted to get to the neck, I can come in with that. Or if I want to do a hammer strike, it's the same thing. If I want to come in with the back strike like this, I come in, same thing. I bring it in, come in like that. Um, there's other methods too. For example, we didn't talk about like a rising strike like that. There's also the florettas, which I like, where you come in like this, and then the last minute you change your wrist um, there's a lot of really fun things to do with this. So if, if these are interesting for you, um, you know, you still gotta be very careful with them, but it's a, these are far safer than learning how to wield like a sword or a knife or, you know, especially like a firearm. Um, if you want to kind of learn like self-defense and you want to learn how a stick works and stuff, these are great things to buy. They're relatively cheap. You can find them in any stores and, um, they're, they're overall like a great technique. Most martial art uh, places know how to use them. So if you're like, hey, I really want to learn how to use the scrim sticks, they might be interested. You might have to kind of go through the system at first. Um, it might take time. I know if with my system, you had to be a couple belts up before they would teach you how to use this. But um, I mean, I've taught white belts just the basic X pattern as well, because it's overall just really fun to use. So anyway, there's my three part series tutorial on the Cali sticks and I hope they brought some interest to you. I mean, what's a um, really quick note, we've at, at our studio, we've also, you know, just talked about um, using like an umbrella or any type of stick like item. You can still do those same patterns. You know, if you had an umbrella and you dropped in and like that's going to really hurt with the tip spear. Um, like these can be used in a lot of interesting places. So it's not just learning about the stick, it's learning about how your body works. That being said, I hope you enjoyed this series, and I'll see you next time.